So you may know that many trees change colors at this time, such as maple tree, oak, or aspen trees. But do you know that evergreen trees will also turn yellow in the fall? So my colleague sent me two photos this week. And if you look at them, if this is your tree, you would be like, uh oh, what's wrong with my tree? It is dying. It is yellowing from the entire tree from top to the bottom. Well, should I spray any chemicals? Should I start trimming those dead tissue? The truth is, this photo was taken two weeks ago, and this photo was taken this week. You can see that two weeks ago, there's a lot of yellowing on the entire tree. But after two weeks, all the yellowing needles fell on the ground and the tree remained healthy. So what did we learn? It is actually a really normal and natural process for seasonal needle drop for most evergreens. So evergreens lose a portion of their foliar needles on the yellow base. It is very noticeable for uh, white pines, like I show in this photo. It is less noticeable on spruce, ferns, and other pines. It does not mean that they don't shed needles. It's just because they retain a really high percentage of green needles so that the yellowing needle will not become noticeable. Just like you may see my photos in the following slides, and you may not notice I have silver hair inside my black hair. So uh, for the seasonal needle drop is uniform and distributed the throughout the inner parts of the evergreen. It is the oldest leaf or needles which are shed. And the needles will turn uniformly yellow or brown and drop on the ground. However, if those needle drop continue to progress and uh, affect both old and young needles, or even some causing some dieback issue or tweak or tape blight, you may need to consider whether your plant has gotten any disease. So there are several factors that can cause needle blight and needle dieback. Let's first talk about environmental stress. For the droughts, of course, if you have really low soil moisture, the evergreen may have trouble getting enough water to all the needles. As a result, the bottom needle will die first, so have to hydrate the rest of the tree. So that's for the drought stress. Soil conditions, let's talk about the nutrition level, on pH level, and the, the compact soil, they can all affect the growth of the, the performance of the tree. If you have a newly planted tree, like we'll show you in this photo, they may have established problem. They may have a mulch problem or weed control problem, or you may have planted too deep. Lastly, the, wide, uh, the harsh winter wind could pose a threat to the pine or spruce tree, particularly on the top of the tree. So in addition to the environmental stress, there are several insects or fungal pathogens can also cause needle blight and needle dieback. In comparison to fungal pathogen, I would say insect damage would be more visible and easier to identify. Here are two examples. First is pine needle scales. You can see those waxy white shell of the scales covering all over the needle. So their scale disease, they normally hatch in the spring and the insects, the crawler will start crawling and is seeking the feeding site. Once they settle down, they will form a new waxy yellow shell attached to a needle. This photo shows a pine aphids. You can see all the black aphids crawling on the twig. So this is what I'm talking about. The insect damage may be easier to identify based on your naked eyes. Uh, the disease pressure is really high. You may need to consider uh, spraying insecticide early in the season. In addition to the insect damage, there are several different fungal pathogens can cause needle blight or needle dieback. Here are some examples. We have dothystroma and a brown needle blight. You can tell on the specific needle, they are no longer on the older needle. They are on the newer uh, development needles, and they can cause those sectional lesions. And not only for needles, they can also cause the tip blights or branch blights, such as the Formosa tip blights. Another two diseases are the Pestilotiopsis and the Philistucta needle of blight, and they normally cause damage for the newly developed shoots or needles. 
there's a little bit tip to identify fungal pathogen. Some fungal pathogen may produce those black dots on the surface of the needle of leaflets, and they are the fruiting bodies on the mature leaves. So they will overwinter in these structures and they will germinate and produce spores to transmit this disease in the spring with rainfall or with wind. And the different fungal pathogen confer different damage to the disease. So that's why accurate diagnosis is really essential to identify the diseases and I recommend proper disease management plans. Therefore, MU Plant Diagnostic Clinic is here to help you. And we have services including plant disease, turf disease, and the plant ID and insect ID services. And you can find us by Google our name on the website and contact us by emailing us or calling our lab. And we're so glad to help you. And if you have a dying Christmas tree in your living room, don't call me because they're going to die and I cannot save them.